What's going on guys, that's what Eric Ryder here. This week's video is going to be a little bit different. I have some pre-recorded footage that I have that I'm actually going to be doing a voiceover, being that I can't do much moto vlogging anymore because it's so cold outside. But this week's video is on a little bit of a sad note because a little over a week ago I received some news that a very good friend of mine had passed away. Now her, her name was Jamie and she was my best friend for 12 years. She was like a sister to me from the very beginning. She was somebody I could confide in when I absolutely needed it. And she prominently saved my life when I planned on taking my life uh, roughly 12 years ago. And uh, this is kind of my, my way of coping with the fact that she's gone. So uh, I just wanted to talk about what she meant to me and what exactly she did that saved my life that was such a big impact. Uh, I know I'm not the only one that she has made an impact with or for, so I mean, I, I, I would love to do this for her, and yeah. So back in 2011, uh, it's really no secret now, I was suicidal. I was bullied very hard in school for the way that I, I, I was. I was ugly. I was tiny you know I was really small compared to other kids and I, I really got bullied for it and it got to the point where I couldn't confide in anybody and there was really nobody I could talk to I had friends but they would just join in on the reindeer games and it wouldn't really make me feel good and, it, and they were just weren't ones I can go and talk to Jamie enrolled in the in the school that year that I was bullied and she was kind of bullied too because she was uh, I guess for the, for the standard or for the time, I guess she was a little on the overweight side, which, you know, that never really bothered me about somebody that still doesn't, but <clears throat> she, uh, me and her really hit it off one time when we had assigned seats and we had to sit next to each other and we just got to talking and talking and talking about random things and we actually found out that we had a lot in common. And it was uh, it, it was it was really cool at the time. I was really nervous to talk to any any kind of girl that is, and uh, that was very unheard of for a nerdy dork kid like me who didn't really have any friends. And everybody thought I was weird. And she was really my first female best friend. And um, you know, after after a whole year of just kind of chit chatting here and there, she was uh, she became a pretty good friend of mine. And we would we would see each other in the halls and say hi and whatnot, but really nothing more than that. But the next year, the uh, I, I entered eighth grade, uh, the last grade of middle school, and around winter time, around this time, actually, yeah, around this time as of this recording, uh, they had a, a school dance, and she was going, me, my friends were going, and you know we were, we were gonna have a good time no matter what, and I, I had gotten out of the suicidal uh, tendencies at that point because. The, the one time that I attempted to take my life, she called me and talked me out of it. And it meant a lot to me that she took the time to do that because, you know, she didn't really have to. And, you know, I didn't really think of her as that kind of friend un until that time. But I, I didn't fully understand it at the time, but looking back. But we, we had that school dance and it was uh, time for the slow dances. And, uh, you know, I was still that dorky kid that really nobody liked. I wasn't really bullied too hard about it at that time. But out of all the, uh, out of all the guys that were there, all the jocks and, and, you know, the cool kids, so to speak, you know, the, the one guy out of the 20, 30 guys that she came over and grabbed the arm of was me. And it kind of took me off guard because I was like, you're dancing with me? Like, I, I know we're friends and all, but I didn't think we were that, like, you know, that close and tight and she's like no I really care about you I wouldn't have called you that day if I didn't and I'm like yeah I guess you're right and it, I was just kind of standing there confused and she uh, and I, I cracked a wise joke at myself I'm, I'm like why would you want to dance with an ugly kid like me and she's like whoa 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 I never said you were ugly and I'm like well that's good because I think you're pretty and that took me off, it took myself off guard because I've never even so much as flirted with another girl like that, you know. And I'll never forget the look on her face when I said that. She looked down to her right and in my left and she, she just kind of blushed and said thank you. And that whole night changed my entire life because that moment right there, being pulled out onto the dance floor, was the, the, the thing that, that changed the whole game for me, that made me who I am today. I, I, it boosted my confidence, my ego. 
I felt better knowing that I could make friends and that I had somebody there for me when I needed it and when I didn't feel like there was. And, and she was there. And throughout the rest of the year, after that very night, we texted every day, we called every day. You know, we, we never tried for a relationship or anything because we were too scared we would ruin what, what we had. And I'm still to this day, I'm still so thankful that we never did and we just had what we had because it was literally the perfect friendship. And um, late, later that year, she ended up switching schools and we lost contact with each other for a little bit, like here and there. And, uh, you know, we eventually graduated high school and we hadn't talked in, in about two years at that point. And after I graduated high school, I started working at Target and I was working close to Black Friday in 2019 and this girl with uh, different colored hair than I remember Jamie having walked in, but she looked super familiar. And I'm like, oh, that girl kind of looks like Jamie. And, you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to play this off. I'm going to go be a good sales representative and I'm going to go see if she needs any help finding anything. And I walk over to her and I say, excuse me, miss, do you need anything? Like, do you, you know, anything I can help you find? And she looks at me, she's like, is your name Kevin? And I'm like, yeah, Jamie, it's me. And I dropped everything in my hands. She dropped everything in her hands. And we just, we hugged. We hugged so hard, like, you know, a lost brother and sister reuniting for the first time in uh, about four years at that point. And we talked and we talked and we caught up with ourselves. And, um, you know, it was like, it was like we never stopped talking. And it was such a great, you know, feeling to be able to have that with her, being that that was the second to last time I was ever going to see her again. And um, a couple weeks pass, and she comes back in again, and we we make plans to hang out, and she's like, do you got my number? And I said, you know what, as a matter of fact, I think I do. And I, I pulled up my phone and saved in my, my Google, my Google account was her number that she put in my phone all the way 10, 10, 11 years ago at the dance. And I'm like, I never got rid of it. And it was still the same contact picture that I set that night that she sent me. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even know that I still had it, but it was, you know, saved in the Google account. And she's like wow I can't believe you kept it after all these years and I'm like yeah me either she's like well that's good because I kept yours too I'm like wow that's just insane and it was just like we never forgot each other even though we hadn't talked in you know a long time and um you know I, I told her that I'd you know I gotta get back to work I'll see you around and she's like text me call me something whatever and uh the funny thing is the very last thing she said to me she's like she's like call me, text me, we'll get a plan going, hey yo. And, and the funny thing is, like, I know I don't really say hey yo in my videos, but those who know me personally, like you could ask Chaos or, or you know, my, my brother or Rice Krispie, I start out almost every single conversation with hey yo, like Scott Hall. And I, I've done that for years, and that was the, the very last thing that she ever said to me. Uh, little did I know that during that time, she was battling demons and she had really fallen into the wrong crowd out of respect for her and her family I'm not going to uh, publicize what she was going through even though I, I know and I I tried to help but you know you can't help people who don't want to be helped I'm not saying that she didn't want to be helped but it was incredibly difficult to do so but um, yeah that was uh, the very last time we saw each other and I would try to text her and call her but every single time it, it was no response but you know that happens in life that you know people get busy and they they just they just can't answer the phone sometimes like that's okay that I, I me personally I understand that she was a busy woman she had a lot going on she was in college she had multiple jobs making ends meet and she had a little boy to raise that she had and uh, you know that, like I said that happens I completely understood but, um, about, yeah, yeah, three years, three years pass, and, uh, I, I get a call from one of my old friends from back in middle school that hung out with me and Jamie that she had passed away, and that was absolutely groundbreaking to me because I now feel that, um, I now feel like a, a very big part of me 
is is gone now because she's not here anymore and I wanted to take her on a ride and reminisce on all of those memories that we made because there was a whole bible of them you know and it was just it, it, it was just something you could write a book about and just be so satisfied thinking about no matter what like every like even Miss Esoteric knows the full story because I tell her I'm like this was the greatest moment of my life so far that the time Jamie saved my life is simply the greatest moment of my life so far. I mean, I'm only, I know I'm only 24 at the time of this recording, but that's a lot can happen in 24 years. But yeah, when, you know, hearing that she passed really, really just kind of just, I, I, I don't know. I, I still can't believe it. I still can't believe that I'm not going to be able to one day bump into her and be like, Hey, this is Miss Esoteric or, you know, let's go for our ride that we, we talked about and I'm not going to be able to do that. And it, it does break my heart. It does make me sad. But on the, on the contrary, she's not suffering anymore. She's not battling her demons. And, uh, you know, she, she did what she could. But sometimes, man, that evil is so powerful. And there's just, it, in my opinion, she was too beautiful and too good of a soul to be on a place like this earth. And, you know, she had no business being here, being as good as she was. That woman was a saint. She was a just a saint for everything that she did for not only me, her family, her friends. Like, I'm definitely not the only one that she did this to, you know, had such a big impact on. But it, it, just, show, it just goes to show how good of a person she was. And she would just, there'll, there'll never be another one like her. And I, I never want one, I never want another girl to be like her because it just won't be the same. Um, I don't have any donation links. I don't have any, uh, support, uh, links for the family, even though I have been keeping in touch with her family, uh, especially her mother. Her mother was actually a teacher at the same school that we all went to, and I've actually known her mother longer than I've known her. But, uh, yeah, uh, ah, man, this sucks. This sucks. Um, obviously, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to end the video on this note before it goes on too long. Obviously, there is no Wi-Fi or 4, 5G in, at this time. <laughs> no cell service, I'll say that, in heaven. But, uh, you know, if, if, you know, Jamie, you're listening, I know you, I don't even know if you even watched my content that, I, I know you saw on the Instagram, because we followed each other, but, uh, you know, I just want you to know that I think about you every day. I miss you. I'll never forget what we had. I'll always be envious of that. I'll, I'll never, never be able to be as good as a person as you were. And you know, I'll. I'll it, it does break my heart that I'll never be able to thank you for what you did to me and for me because you never, you didn't have to pull me on that dance floor that night. And I don't know if you knew. But that changed my entire life and that made me such a better man that you were there for me and it honestly it saved my life. I wish I could have saved yours, but you know, that's that's the way it goes down. That's life. I have to I have to accept that because that's just the way it is. But Jamie, I love you, I miss you, I will see you down the road. Hey yo.